This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and oh my god, isn't it cute? This is the Intel NUC. It stands for Next Unit of Computing, for those of you who are wondering. What it means is a teeny tiny mini PC. So this is the NUC 8, which means Intel 8th generation inside. But not just any 8th generation, this is the Bean Canyon iteration. So it's a 28 watt CPU. And so between Ultrabook 15 watt and the 45 watt CPU that you would see in mobile workstations and gaming desktops, pretty much only the 13 inch MacBook Pro uses that in between one. We have Intel Iris Pro 655 graphics and it's insanely small. This is pretty much one of the smallest ones on the market. We're gonna look at it now. So what do you say when a desktop PC is so small that it's a fairly compact charger is this big next to it? Yes. So though this might have the brains of a laptop on steroids, it's still something that does need to be plugged into an AC outlet. So this is for those of you who don't have a whole lot of room wherever you're putting a small apartment, whatever it is, or conference rooms, you want to do presentations, you don't have room for a big desktop PC. This is pretty neat. It comes with a Visa mount actually, so you can attach this to the back of a monitor or a TV. You get the idea. Or you can leave it freestanding on the table, hide it anywhere. Unlike some previous generation Intel NUX, this one is actually quieter. This is in part because we're up to the Intel 8th generation Coffee Lake and it's more power efficient and better cooling design as well. It has an 80 millimeter fan inside, which is your average desktop PC size cooling fan. So that's pretty adequate. It's very easy to get inside. You just unscrew the four feet, they're clad in rubber at the bottom, and then you can lift the lid off and inside, you have two RAM slots for a maximum of 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM. And it's your typical laptop SO DIMM, 1.2 volt. And you have an M.2 SSD slot, it's compatible with SATA 3 and NVMe SSDs. We tested it with an NVMe SSD to check out the speeds. It's the Samsung Evo 960. It did well. And there's even a two and a half inch drive bay. So you could either use a two and a half inch solid state drive or a spinning hard drive, whatever you want. Now, if you want to get to the CPU and to the fan, that takes more work because that's on the flip side of the motherboard, the side that you can't see when you open it up to access the RAM and the SSDs and all that sort of thing. I'm probably, you know, unless something went wrong with it down the road, though, you're not going to be needing to do that. And I assume you're kind of on the geeky side if you're buying one of these because this is sold bare bones, the version that we have, which means you put in your own RAM and your own SSDs. Now, if you look at Amazon, there are also kits that include RAM and SSDs. If you go bare bones, it's about $550 for this. And if you go with the kits, add about $200 more to get say, 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig NVMe SSD. So not too bad a deal. It's not like it's cheap Cheetos. Despite the fact that it's really small, it doesn't mean it's cheap. Speaking of that fan again, now because this is a really teeny tiny case, if you're the, the person that says, oh wow, Intel Iris Pro 655 graphics, which is almost as good as NVIDIA MX150 graphics, something like that. If you're gonna play Fortnite all the time, if you're gonna do really demanding things with this, you might want a NUC with a bigger case, like the Chewy one that we reviewed a while ago. And you can see the footprint of it. It's more like the size of a Mac mini. So beyond that, for everyday normal productivity, use streaming video, all that sort of thing, temperature are fine in terms of the core temperatures. A little hotter than you would find on an Ultrabook, mind you, but still in the safe zone. We saw the cores typically in the 50s and the 60s centigrade when doing moderate work with it. And it'll go up into the 90s when you're doing benchmarks. When it comes to the noise, they really do have it under control. Some of the older generation of NUCs can get downright loud. This one, no, the loudest it gets is about like a 14 inch laptop would get with commensurate load. So pushing it hard, you're going to hear it more, not doing anything, you won't hear it at all, that sort of thing. So it certainly isn't annoying and it's not going to interrupt your presentation by huffing and chuffing or anything like that. Ports on this are better than the average Ultrabook these days because those have gotten so slim and light, there's just no room for ports. We have four USB-A ports and they're 10 gigabit per second, so that's Gen 2 USB 3.1, Gen 2. We have a Thunderbolt 3 port slash also USB-C and I use that actually to hook up our 4K LG monitor for testing and it does display port 1.2 out via the USB-C port. You also have an HDMI 2.0A port. You've got a headphone jack on here. You have a micro SD card slash so UHS type one, and it has RJ45 ethernet plus Wi-Fi. And it's the Intel 9560 AC Wi-Fi card, and you've got Bluetooth 5 too. So in terms of ports, you're doing pretty well here. And it, it is a marvel, honestly, for something this small to have that many. If you're wondering about that yellow port in the front, that one does charging. So if it's turned off, you can use it to charge your smartphone or whatever.
Note that there are two heights available with this kit. There's the low height and there's the, the taller model. And I would recommend the taller model. More room for cooling, always a good thing. And it's available with Intel Core i3, i5, and i7 processors. The, the prices that I quoted to you were for the i7 version of this. Obviously, you could go with an i5, save, save yourself about $100, maybe even $150, and still have a good amount of processing power. As you might guess, if you go with the bare bones kit, which doesn't even have an SSD or a hard drive, then there is no operating system. So if it's compatible with Linux and it's compatible with Windows. Now there are some builds out there that you can buy that come with an SSD and a Windows 10 license. You're going to need a Windows 10 license if that's your flavor. As to whether you can hack and tosh it, I don't know, but I think I'm going to try. So that's the Intel NUC 8 or 8th generation. And if you have a need for an incredibly small PC, obviously tied to an electric outlet, oh well, but something that you could actually visa mount to the back of your monitor, which is kind of insane, as long as your cooling requirements aren't super high, you don't intend to be trying to play Fortnite on this thing all the time, for example, it does the job and in an incredibly compact way. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.